The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting group. Access Fort Wayne is a department of the Allen County Public Library. If you or anyone you know might be interested in making a television show, please call 260-421-1250. Welcome to the Cashman Mind, Body, Spirit Show. Today's subject, I think, is quite important. Maybe could be to your own life, or maybe to the life of a spouse, or your children, or maybe uh, your, the grandparents. And, and that really is related to the effects of smoking uh, cigarettes or marijuana uh, on us. Uh, in terms of the illnesses, you know, I, I now am a wellness uh, doctor, but I was a neurosurgeon for many years, so I treated, frankly, a lot of uh, people who developed a cancer that was spread to their brain or to the spine uh, from the habit of, of smoking uh, tobacco. It was the nicotine that, that was doing it. Uh, and just to tell you a few reasons for my motivation is actually, I, besides going to the brain, uh, it, the cancers from, a nic from uh, nicotine uh, can be in any organ anywhere on the body, so it's not just the brain. And I saw a lot of cancers, frankly, uh, to the eyes, to the mouth, to the tongue. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine having a tumor on your tongue? You know what, what they did for those people? They cut out the tongue. I just can't imagine such a thing. Uh, uh, to, to the jaw, uh, a lot of times the teeth would fall out from vast disease. Sometimes the tumor involved the, the teeth from the jaw and they take off half the face. Uh, and, and I could go on and on. Uh, they went to the spine and to the liver, and you can, you can just imagine. Uh, those people did not live very long. Sometimes I'd see them, they'd have tumors all over the place already, sort of a hopeless case. I couldn't really even operate. What I'm trying to teach you today, prevention. Not to have the darn thing in the first place. And a lot of times, people are smoking, let's, let, let's be truthful, I mean, a lot of people are smoking a lot less now, no doubt about it. But the other day uh, on the news and in the newspaper, I hear that 24.5% uh, of the people in Allen County are smoking. That's a bit higher than the rest of the nation. Uh, and if you take vaping into consideration uh, among children, it's even higher than that. Uh, and part of that is because our state government, our federal government, has not stepped up to bat, and they could have uh, uh, helped prevent this, the latest e-product, uh, Juuling, uh, uh, which uh, you see what 60% of the kids don't even realize are the ones that are Juuling and smoking. They don't realize it's getting nicotine in it. Mm -hmm. They're going to be cigarette addicts time to get set and done with that. Going to cut their lifespan short. It could be many years of disability. Uh, and uh, not 100%, but 80%, an early death. And not a friendly death. It's not just most of them die of uh, horrible diseases for amputations, mm -hmm. paralysis, blindness loss of teeth, suddenly grab their chest and die. 
I'm going to teach you how to avoid that. So first, let's start a little bit with the history here, a little bit. Where does tobacco come from? Well, of all things, that tobacco plant, uh, most of it is in the Americas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, the U.S. and South America, about 70 different species, uh, and uh, found originally, as far as the history goes, in Peru and Ecuador. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, when the explorers came over here, uh, like uh, uh, Columbus, for example, uh, guess what they did? They sent them back to France, to Europe, to Amsterdam, to, to Spain, all over the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Maya Indians use, used them probably for a thousand or two, 2,000 years, and, and they didn't use them very much, but they, they wrapped them in the, in the leaf, and it caused, it caused some hallucinations, some mental changes, delusions, and they used it in religious ceremonies. Uh, but they were not full-time uh, uh, smokers, as far as uh, that we know. So they use it for religion, and uh, what they exported to Portugal, to France, 1559. Uh, and uh, in the European countries, they recognized it, uh, the scientists recognized it as uh, being poisonous. It was an alkaloid similar to opium, quinine, or heroin. So they knew it was kind of a, a, a toxic, uh, but soon they also realized they could turn it into a business. So Sir Walter uh, Raleigh uh, recognized that he could turn it into a business and, and, and sell it all over the world. King James uh, the first got involved, uh, and in the 19th, uh, 18th century or 17th century or so when uh, he, he was around, but he was against it because they were using up a lot of the farmland which they needed for food. Instead, they were planting uh, tobacco. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, in, in Europe, uh, and it was, they needed the land for food. So they, they got into a bit of a, a, a tiff. Politics got involved with cigarettes to an extent you will not believe. It's still there today. It's still there uh, today. Uh, and if you happen to want to read in detail about the politics of cigarettes, <laughs> I'm not sure you want to read a book this big, but this is my third time going through it because I've done TV shows on it before. It's The Golden Holocaust uh, by Robert N. Proctor. Uh, and I'll just hold it up with a very scary and appropriate, and appropriate uh, uh, cigarette in the skeleton's uh, mouth, a very, very detailed uh, book. And I'll refer to it in, uh, a little bit later, too, in case you want to see where's my information coming from. Uh, I know the detail of this, and it's very um, uh, interesting. Uh, so, uh, Seville, Spain, uh, were the first ones to manufacture uh, uh, nicotine uh, products and, and sold it all over. They called them papillettes, little tiny things. Uh, and uh, also Egypt got involved with this a little bit, but it quickly spread across the world because these were turned into uh, businesses. But eight events in the early 20th century, 20th century helped spread uh, uh, cigarettes and nicotine, which is the addictive substance in the cigarette, but uh, incidentally, besides the nic nicotine uh, in, in cigarettes when they were in invented, many other chemicals, maybe as high as 500. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of them uh, were not tested on humans, so they cause damage too. It's not just the nicotine. Uh, uh, and there are many other chemicals that are uh, in the uh, cigarette. So the one thing, these companies could only ad addict maybe 10, 12% of the people. Uh, they were 90% of their customers, yeah, because the nicotine gives you some physical addiction. But uh, if you stop smoking, uh, that leaves you pretty quick 
a little tight feeling, maybe a little bit of pain, last a few days and it's gone. It's the psychological addiction that's really the problem. And what happens is the uh, uh, nicotine hits in you the addictive circuitry of your brain, okay? Uh, also, the circuitry of your brain that makes you feel good. Uh, the nucleus at cubans is one millimeter in size. It's near the front of the brain. Uh, and uh, things that make it releases dopamine, a biochemical that makes you feel good, okay? A cigarette, bang, seven seconds, it goes to the brain, and I'm in heaven, I'm feeling good. Other things do that. Music does that. Laughter does that. Alcohol does that. So, but that set up in your brain to, to uh, reduce anxiety, for example. You do some deep breathing uh, and, and, uh, and concentrate on nothing, not the past, not the future, and take about 10 deep breaths. It'll affect that and make you feel better. Uh, and so the dopamine is the, the quick fix. Uh, and for the back, serotonin is relieved. That's the long-term stress reliever. Uh, but these chemicals in the cigarette, which ends up is not just nicotine, uh, affects the circuitry of your brain. And that's how people get addicted. Uh, for example, they may use uh, heroin, uh, uh, and, and, and that really shoots it off, uh, and you feel so good, you want to take it again. So you begin to understand uh, these uh, feel-good chemicals, but one can get so used to having them uh, that we want to repeat it. And after a while, some of the receptors on the cells that make you feel good die out, so we need a higher dose. So we constantly, we need to smoke more. We need to uh, uh, eat more sugar. Sugar does the same darn thing. Heroin does the same thing. So these receptors die out. The ones that we have left, we need to int introduce into our body more of the uh, substance to get the, same, to get the same effect. So what they found out is that if they could take a tobacco leaf uh, and uh, soak it in molasses or, or licorice, uh, uh, maple syrup, uh, for example, that would increase the sugar content uh, of the tobacco leaf. And after they cut it, they cure it. They hang it upside down for a week or so. And uh, there's air curing. And, and there's ones with fire, Virginia, I think, at the fire. Kentucky at the air curings, different types of uh, tobacco. And, and they, then they would soak it in molasses and sugar and licorice, yes, to increase the sugar content. And they found out that when you smoke, uh, it releases an alkaline, alkaline uh, smoke, okay? But that makes you cough right away. For example, I'm not a smoker, but in high school, I remember my roommate and I, we were in a boarding school. Uh, and uh, we tried one day smoking, because everybody was smoking in those days. And uh, we went to the bathroom, and, uh, and uh, we both lit up a cigarette, and we started coughing, and we coughed all night. That must have been alkaline tobacco. We never tried it again. A few days later, we tried a pipe. And fortunately, and I thank the gods for this. We de both developed diarrhea. There must have been the chemicals in it. Uh, and so ne that was it for us. Never tried it again. Th thank you. Thank you. And just, just lucky. Just, just lucky. After all, we did uh, uh, try it. You can be addicted, incidentally, in one day. Mm -hmm. You can be addicted in one day. Don't mess with it. Don't mess with it. Uh, and so what they found out Remember the alkaline part I talked about? They found out if they could add sugar, if they could add sugar, it made the smoke acidic. And it opened up the alveoli, the little sacs of air in our lungs, to create more surface area and became acidic, opened the door to the bloodstream. And the addiction rate doubled quickly, quickly. 
because the sugar, there is a half a teaspoonful. Mm. You want to believe this. I knew this for years. I know because I read this book for years and I knew it before that. But it was recently an article in the newspaper again. Uh, I, there's sugar in cigarettes. A half, there's a half a teaspoonful of sugar in every cigarette. Mm. So you not only have nicotine addiction, you're smoking every day, you get sugar addiction. And a lot of people who smoke, you notice they get the munchies, they got a pot belly. A lot of them got a pot belly. And it's the, the sugar and the nicotine is stimulating their appetite because it raises their blood sugar and their blood sugar along with the nicotine. Remember, nicotine every half hour goes down, so you smoke again. Mm -hmm. So you smoke again. So all day long, if you're a smoker all day long, all your life, you're going like this. High nicotine, high sugar, all day long, you're going, you're going along, all day long. You want to spend your life like that? Then you get to light up again, light up again. Sugar, nicotine, sugar, nicotine. That is your life if you're a smoker. Don't start. Don't start. It's rapidly addictive. Sugar is too. They're both rapidly addictive. So if you're a nicotine addict, you're also a sugar addict. Mm -hmm. a double whammy. And if you get that, you, you need the munchies, and you get a bout belly, guess what? You're probably diabetic, too. Mm -hmm. They may tell you you're not, but they're in the right test, like a serum insulin, you, you find out you're, di you're diabetic. Mm -hmm. now, you, you, now you need to take those medications. And uh, so smoking has side effects. Next, what promoted the thing is the invention of m matches early 1900s, they invented matches so you could light the darn thing. Uh, uh, and uh, before people started smoking cigarettes, so they were using chewing tobacco uh, and cigars. Uh, a regular average cigar is, is, is about like smoking uh, three or four cigarettes. Most people in the late 1800s, uh, they uh, did not inhale. They did not inhale. Still, the nicotine was getting involved with the mouth and the tongue and the jaws. And they were seeing cancers of the throat and cancers of the jaws and the mouth and, and, and the residuals, uh, metabolites in the stomach and increased stomach cancers. So people were slowly waking up. This is effects, but the industry was trying to make you think that these diseases were not related to the cigarettes because it affected sales tremendously. And they fought heavily uh, against the science of it. It wasn't really till the 50s, 60s, 70s that things get serious uh, where the government got involved and a lot of lawsuits involved that finally, and there was fraud involved. I remember a committee of seven CEOs of companies going on a panel in front of Congress, and all seven said, no, it doesn't cause cancer. All seven, they were lying. And, and when they get a hold of the papers through subpoenas and things, finally, it exposed the whole fraud, the whole fraud. The next thing that happened, first to make a cigarette, uh, 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 cigarettes which were uh, uh, cheaper, um, yeah, that's part of the reason they, they uh, uh, came along. They make you feel, make you feel better uh, because people start inhaling them. And then when they added sugar, they get into the bloodstream a lot quicker, seven seconds to the brain. Okay? But cigarettes, they were making them by hand. They could uh, uh, make only a few hundred uh, an hour, but once they invented this machine, was in, they called the Bonsack machine. Many machines were developed. But once they develop them, they can make 20,000 cigarettes in a few minutes. Uh, so uh, with that caused the explosion of cigarettes across the world to the point, I think uh, 6 million cigarettes are smoked a day. Mm. It's probably, I'm sure it's more than that. And, uh, and then the governments uh, decided to tax it. So that brought... that. So the government didn't want to really stop you from smoking because they were making a lot of money. Uh, There's a significant amount of money made on the taxation of, uh, of uh, cigarettes. 
and then started mass marketing on radio and TV and signs and and uh, and that spread it. But the, the government was making money. Even now, they'd be reluctant to uh, uh, give it up. Uh, and there was manipulation of knowledge. Scientists begin to know that cancers related to it, but they, the uh, it was the knowledge was uh, was confabulated and confusing uh, to people. And once people are addicted, uh, they don't want to think that they have a cancer stick in their hand. Well, they call them cancer sticks. Uh, uh, the stick of death, for example. The people uh, partially knew. Uh, and, and because people were becoming addicted, remember I said about the receptors dying out? Because you, you're smoking a half a pack a day, and after a while it's a pack, and then it's two packs, and then it's three packs, and then it's four packs. Uh, and some people, it's unbelievably addictive, and it can never stop. I saw, as a doctor, I saw people, because smoking lights up the vasculature of the body. Every blood vessel is inflamed when you c cigarette. Okay, so vascular disease, besides cancer, uh, is uh, extremely common. And, and about 10% of the smokers have advanced d disease. They will have literally, their, first they dislocate their joints, then the toes are amputated, then the lower leg, then the upper leg, then up to the thigh, and then they start to the arms, and they're up to here, and eventually can't, can't breathe. They have a trach in there, still smoking can't stop. I don't look down on the people that, that happens to. I saw that. I saw people sitting in wheelchairs, everything amputated, still smoking a, a cigarette. Uh, I think they needed it just to have a day. Even with all this, could feel this and their mind was involved. They were severely a, 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 a addicted. I think you'd have to literally lock them up uh, and maybe uh, some would get over it, but who wants to do that, okay? They were slaves to cigarettes. That's how serious this is. So I really encourage children not to start smoking if, a ch if you have a, a child watching or trying to teach them. For one thing too, uh, in children, uh, it affects the uh, brain much more. I've seen uh, PET scans, MRI scans of children's brains who are smoking and parts of the brain are missing. You can see it as holes. I can prove it to you. you can see, and that's been well in the medical uh, literature. So you can take an intelligent child, make them average. You can take an average child uh, and make them retarded. It's true. It's in the medical literature. Uh, up to about age 25, Nicotine as an exp in the chemicals that are uh, benzoprines and nitrates and nitrites that are in, in the cigarettes. I mean, there's about 500 chemicals. I can't name, can't name them all. They're in this book if you want to read about them or just Google it. Chemicals in the cigarettes, uh, uh, and 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 it can destroy uh, the brain of a child. So when a state government, for example, is al allowing e-cigarettes uh, to be sold, okay? And I have to kind of pick a little bit with many friends that I have who are very successful. They run huge businesses in town. And, and what do they sell? Uh, products for, for jeweling, for uh, marijuana products. That are, that are the jeweling little cassettes now. They're putting marijuana in their uh, 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 in there, uh, uh, for example, and, and they're selling these cigarettes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I think if you have a moral stand and have beliefs and things, maybe you might consider not selling them through your business. Uh, what do you say? How can you argue with that? Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, the other names we can use uh, for cigarettes, cancer sticks, uh, butts, jacks, joes, coffins, nails. Well, it's appropriate, isn't it? And uh, so 
the flu curing of, of cigarettes and then combining uh, the, Kentucky, the Kentucky cigarettes with the Virginia cigarettes together, uh, combining them together. And the first one coming out was Camel cigarettes. And, and there was a, in a, when there was a marketing crash of the stock market in 1929, a lot of people who had smoked cigars before that uh, went to cigarettes because they were a lot cheaper because there was the, and, and addicts have to continue. And, uh, and of course, a lot of, uh, when you smoke a lot of the uh, cigarettes, they just throw them on the ground. Uh, and when uh, it was discovered that secondary smoke, non-smokers in a house with smokers which I know plenty examples of, uh, that secondary smoke can have tremendous effects on a person too. I remember as a neurosurgeon, I was treating this uh, very attractive blonde, I remember her to this day, who, had, who came to see me with back pain and leg pain, and anybody would have thought she had a ruptured disc. But I get a picture, uh, of, and she was a non-smoker, non-smoker, maybe 40 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, but I saw a tumor in the tailbone, and that worried me right away. But her husband was standing close, and I could smell in his clothes. Remember, if you're a smoker, your whole house smells. You smell. Maybe you even stink, okay? And this guy looked like a smoker because it affects your skin. Uh, 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 nicotine, remember, I said it involves your vasculature. It involves the vasculature. Uh, of, of your skin, uh, your face, okay? Smoker's face. Most smokers look 20 years older than they are. Not that 20 years old is the happens over time. Uh, I remember giving a talk to about 40 kids who were smokers at a high school. I remember myself and another guy speaking to them and <laughs> 16-year-old girl comes up to me and she says, well, do I look 20 years older? <laughs> it takes a little bit of time. I mean, it's not funny, but it's going to happen to her because uh, smokers look older, okay? And so it has effects on, on your beauty. I think it's something to uh, consider. And, and smokers will throw their butts on the ground because they chase them outside now because they don't allow you to smoke indoors. Uh, and that's a lot of trash. And, and they've studied this and found a third of the trash of the world. Cigarette butts. Mm -hmm. What do you do with them then? Uh, because there's tar. It damages the environment tremendously. Uh, so something to consider. Uh, so uh, uh, the uh, blending of cigarettes was done by R.J. Reynolds and the Campbell Company. Uh, North Carolina, uh, they were, uh, I think, producing 28 billion cigarettes a year and collecting uh, the taxes therefrom. Uh, even Duke University, for example, uh, was founded by a, by a gentleman whose main source of money was tobacco, tobacco farming. Mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, uh, in 1987, they brought out e-cigarettes, uh, and uh, and now, especially the jeweling company, uh, and it, it caused a rapid, a rapid increase in smoking, 900 percent in a year, mm -hmm. around uh, 2017 or so at that time, and then uh, we seemed to have a decrease for a couple of years year and a half or so, and then the, the jeweling company uh, comes out uh, uh, with uh, cigarettes uh, and rapidly a 600% increase uh, in the rate of smoking among teenagers, high school kids especially, um, and the government should have stopped that. Yeah, they, they, they should have stopped that. Uh, the report 
which I recently reviewed. I like to be way off, and you can print this off. Uh, Google it and print it off. A Surgeon General's Advisory on E-Cigarette Use Among Youth. You can print it and Google it, or uh, you can get a copy uh, from me. I see people for free on Fridays at the Three Rivers Pharmacy by Concordia High School. You can go there and I want a copy of this and we'll print it up for you because I think it's kind of important. And so I'm going to read some of this uh, to you because this is uh, very important. Uh, and, he's, and this is a certain general at this time, you know, Jeremy Adams, at this time I know him personally. And, uh, uh, and that's his, his report I printed off yesterday. Considerable progress has been made in reducing cigarette smoking among our nation's youth, period. That's not true. I read the paper the other day. Not a lot of progress has been made. We've allowed them to start this e-cigarette business uh, where uh, kids are smoking more and, and there'll be, uh, it has nicotine in it. 60% of the kids think that, that uh, e-cigarettes don't have, don't have uh, uh, any nicotine in it wrong. They're using it also for marijuana. Mm -hmm. Okay. However, the tobacco product landscape continues to evolve to include a variety of tobacco products, including s smoked and smokeless, you know, chewing tobacco, for example. But it's still nicotine, okay? Chewing tobacco has uh, nicotine in it, okay? Uh, and it's still, you still become addicted to it. I know somebody I play pickleball with, uh, that while he's playing, is chewing tobacco. And I think he's clearly addicted to it because the, the why won't allow it, but I notice every time he's there, he's chewing away. Real nice person, he can't help it. He, he's a nicotine addict. Mm -hmm. Pickleball makes me feel good, so <laughs> maybe I'm addicted to pickleball, <laughs> but uh, it makes me feel good. I don't need the nicotine, okay? So I want you to develop something that makes you feel good, whatever you like, whether it's dancing or walking or singing. Uh, we all need something to feel good, that dopamine release. We all need it, okay? And uh, uh, this morning I played the piano a little bit. Now I'm singing uh, to the music, and it made me oh, good. And tomorrow I'm looking forward to it already. So you all need two or three things that make you feel good. Let's avoid consuming alcohol or, or cigarettes or whatever. Uh, so he's talking about new products, electronic products, e-cigarettes. And he says, the Surgeon General says, e-cigarettes are designed to deliver nicotine and flavorings. Have you noticed uh, the, that uh, these uh, e-cigarettes have sugary names, okay? And, and nobody makes anything out of it. But that is what gets you addicted to it. And it opens the uh, VLI, makes uh, them acidic, and allows the nicotine and other chemicals, which we don't necessarily want to hit the bloodstream, and grab you and addict you. That's why they got the sugary things in it, to make it taste a little better because because uh, cigarettes by themselves don't taste very good. But you add some sugar to it, uh, you know, it might help. And uh, so e-cigarettes entered the U.S. market, he says, 2007, okay? But, and since 2014, they've been mostly commonly used tobacco product among U.S. youth, the most common product among the youth. So if, you get a, if you're a child, uh, don't do it because you, 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 you can become addicted to cigarettes in all your lifetime. You're up and down every half hour, got to have another cigarette, got to have another cigarette. Some need cigarettes around the clock. I had a patient like that in the hospital one time, uh, and, and, and he get up every hour and one time. It, they used to allow people to, to uh, smoke on the staircase. Yeah, this has evolved over time, okay, on the staircase. 
and he fell down the stairs and hurt himself. And, and asked the nurse, what's going on? He said, every hour he'd get out of bed, go to the staircase and smoked. He is one of those guys who's going to have to have his legs amputated, I'm sure. And uh, so the smoking increase among high, middle school and high school students increased 900% during 2011 and 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, before declining for the first time, 15 to, to 2017. Okay. However, current e-cigarettes use increased 78% among high school students during the past year. Why do you think it was that? The dueling of cigarettes, that's why. Uh, it increased from 11.7% to 2017 to 28% in 2018, okay? And um, it's higher since we know the recent statistics in Allen County, it was, was it 23.5, I think? And, uh, and it, although I think it's higher than that, among the youth, that was the general population. And the youth, I think it's higher than that, including one in five high school students and one in 20 middle school students are currently using e-cigarettes. Mm -hmm. Talk to your kid, talk to your kid. And these little uh, uh, th things that they have, they can hide them. So they made them, uh, and they, uh, they have less smoke, less aerosol in them now so it doesn't get noticed so much. I notice myself moving around the community. I don't see any great evidence of people smoking. I don't see smoke going up a lot. Uh, maybe I'm traveling the wrong circles, but I get around town quite a bit. As I got to think uh, people are able to hide it uh, pretty darn good. So check your kid, yourself, and if you're smoking yourself, consider stopping. Uh, because of the things I mentioned already, the cancers, the vast of these, the unannounced heart attacks, the blindness, the hearing loss, loss of teeth, loss of tongue, loss of jaw, uh, loss of smoking affects every cell in your body, every cell. You light up, every cell is affected. Mm -hmm. uh, so he, as he says, Igoret, E-cigarette aerosol is not harmless. That's the smoke, okay? Most e-cigarettes contain nicotine, the addictive drug in regular cigarettes and cigars and other tobacco products. Every product has nicotine in it because that's what makes you feel good, okay? Uh, nicotine exposure during adolescence can harm the developing brain, which continues to develop until age 25. I told you that already, okay? I'm glad you, know, you, you, you need to hear that um, again. Using nicotine in adolescence can also increase the risk for future addiction to other drugs. Mm -hmm. There's increased incidence of alcohol, narcotics, and people who smoke cigarettes. Mm -hmm. That's not the only addiction people that they have. Uh, so, the aerosol users inhale the exhale from e-cigarettes can potentially expose both themselves and bystanders. Remember I said secondary smoke, okay? And, and, and the, the smoke is in them. Heavy metals, volatile organic compounds, ultrafine particles that can be inhaled deeply into the lungs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Many, here's one I told you about. I like repeating it so we get it straight. Many e-cigarettes also come in kid-friendly flavors. Huh. Huh. In addition to making e-cigarettes more appealing to young people, some of the chemicals used to make certain flavors may also have health risks. The flavors themselves, talking about sugar. Actually, they're not really sure what's the addictive part for certain. Mm -hmm. Is it it's the sugar or the nicotine? I mean, odds are the nicotine, but sugar has also bad uh, side effects. And so does marijuana, if you were to smoke marijuana, because marijuana turns off 70% of the chemicals, the cytochrome for 50 chemicals from the liver that metabolize things you're taking. So if you're taking other drugs and, and you use CBD oil or, or uh, marijuana, you can turn up the detoxification of other drugs you're on, very dangerous. I saw 
there's a person uh, that works at a workout center who didn't believe me, so she asked a girl, a, an elderly lady that she was, who was on a warfarin, who she had sold CBD oil to, and come to uh, uh, find out when they checked her blood and never clotted. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, she didn't die. So these things interfere with drugs you're taking because it affects the metabolism of what you're on. And, uh, so in 2016, one third of US middle and high school students uh, had used e-cigarettes, had used marijuana in e-cigarettes too. See what I'm talking about? I think you get it. So, uh, and, and if adults switch to that, they think, well, I'll uh, be smoking less or addicted less if I use e-cigarettes. It turns out uh, people that do that will use e-cigarettes and regular cigarettes the majority of the time because it's difficult to, to overcome the thought process of some people who are addicted. Okay, so, um, so for youth, the use of multiple tobacco products puts youth at an even greater risk for addiction and tobacco-related harms. Yeah. Moreover, this has been studied. Moreover, 2018, the National Academy of Sciences Engineering Medicine report concluded there was moderate evidence that e-cigarette increases the frequency of intensity of surrogate cigarette smoking in the future. So, but any e-cigarette use among younger people is unsafe, even if they do not progress to future cigarette smoking. It has its own side effects. Remember, it affects the brain. It can take an intelligent child and make an average, an average child, and make them uh, slow. So, uh, and e-cigarettes come in many shapes and sizes, uh, that uh, rapidly changing uh, product class, different names, e-cigarettes, e-hookers, mods, weight pens, they'll use different names to fool you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, recently a new type of e-cigarette has come along, increasingly popular among our nation's youth due to its minimal exhaled aerosol. It's less coming out, you can hide it better, small size, make it easy to conceal, called the jewel cigarette. Remember, I mentioned that already. And uh, so many of these e-cigarettes look like a USB flash drive, among other shapes. So that's the, one of the most common, commonly ones uh, sold. Uh, and uh, so you, if you're trying to see if any of your kids are doing it, you, it may be difficult to find out. And it, just listen to this. All jewel e-cigarettes have a high level of nicotine. A typical jewel cartilage or pod contains about as much nicotine as a pack of 20 regular cigarettes. A state government, a federal government is allowing this. Shame on you, shame on you. I'm trying to do something about it by passing out information. But you must participate in a certain general report ask people to participate in spreading the knowledge. But again, the Surgeon General is in charge of the country. He could try to pass a law that these would be outlawed. At the same time, he could look at the sugar eating epidemic called type 2 diabetes. They're not doing that, okay? Opportunity lost, opportunity lost. Doesn't mean I'm not trying doesn't mean I may not try to contact Jeremy Adams, certain general of the United States. Again, I'm trying right now, actually. So here's some information for parents, which is interesting. You can uh, look at a website for young people, uh, ecigarettes.surgeongeneral.gov. ecigarettes.surgeongeneral.gov. Read that, okay? I want you to gather information. And uh, also, uh, you, could call, you could look at smokefree.gov. Smokefree.gov, a lot of information. A another one uh, is, you can call a number, 
800 quit now okay one hyphen 800 hyphen quit hyphen now so that would be a good one to call and uh, adapt tobacco tobacco free rules including e-cigarettes in your home and in your vehicle now if you or your husband or one of you is smoking uh, there's a problem as a child remember I tried it once cough so much I didn't want to do it my father didn't exactly show a great example because he smoked he was under a lot of stress working day and night in the deli 20 hours a day so we compliment him for working for his family and he sure enough did and uh, I even lived within three blocks of the Metropolitan Museum of Art in Manhattan I'm not complaining but you, you know he finally did stop smoking. You remember I said he worked long hours. You know what happened? He woke up, woke up one time. Uh, he had fallen asleep. He thought he had narcolepsy, but I think he just worked too hard. We have to give him credit for that. He found his body on fire. Mm. Yeah, His hair was on fire. His shirt was on fire. He fortunately was able to put it out. Nothing permanent from that at the last day he smoked. Remember, we, you hear about a house having burned down at two in the morning a lot of times. What do you think was the cause a lot of the time? People smoking. C cigarettes, marijuana, I bet you. I, I talked to a fireman, 80% of the time, it's, 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 it's somebody smoking. So, so talk to your child or teen about e-cigarettes, how harmful they are, it's never too late. Uh, and uh, get the Surgeon General's report, which I'm reading to you. Talk with your teen about e-cigarettes. That's the one I'm referring to uh, right now. You can print it off the internet or get a free copy by looking me up at the Three Rivers Pharmacy where I am on Fridays, where I'm gonna be tomorrow actually. We'll print out a copy uh, for you. Uh, and, and, and teachers and in schools need to bring this up regularly yeah, because some parents you know are not capable of teaching or they don't teach so I think if you're a school teacher uh, I would uh, bring this up consistently consistently not just one or two sessions I think I, I would take a half a minute or a minute every class and talk about different addictions all types of addiction and maybe have a handout about it uh, I don't know if your school uh, encourages that or not, but I would highly recommend that you do that. I, I think it's a, it's a, a, a good idea. The um, when you're having withdrawal of nicotine, what are some of the symptoms? Anxiety, depression. Some people become depressed. Anger, frustrated, irritable, difficulty sleeping, problem concentrating, headache, hunger, even drug addiction would be uh, similar. This is the psychological addiction. The physical addiction, uh, things in your body, a rash, irritability, itching. Uh, when you see somebody going like this all the time, this all the time, think about addiction. You get when your kid's doing this all the time, think of addiction. That's physical addiction. Uh, I have seen it. People come to see me in the office. I've seen it in, you know, everybody's got an extended family. And, uh, and, and when you see somebody like this, I tell you another one was a clue to me that people are addicted. And I learned that the hard way. Uh, and I'm not saying just a few tattoos, but people who have tattoos all over their body, many times in the hospital, and I, I appear to be the only one attuned to it. And I had to teach other doctors about it. A lot of times people were addicted to something, whether it be a cigarette or, yeah, yeah. But tattooing, has, since then, has become so common. You know, a tattoo here and there, uh, that's the way it is. 
Although I wonder if you have a beautiful body, why do you want to decorate it like that? It'll be there forever, that's, but that's up to you, <laughs> okay? But uh, tattoos all the body because uh, when people do that, it makes them feel good. It, it's like a massage, except it's more, more permanent, okay? Uh, so, but if you're trying to quit, I mean, there are methods uh, where uh, Alan Carr, C-R-R, has a method of you just stop. But you got to be prepared to stop. Uh, and that wouldn't work for everybody, but, but it does work for some people. Uh, although it's throughout his book that if you use substitutes, that uh, they only maintain the process. But I, I do think some people uh, have to use patches, cigarette patches, which are less nicotine than you're smoking, okay? And it infuses nicotine all day long. I know of people who stopped, became over the addiction uh, doing that, chewing gum. Uh, is another one at a reduced dosage, but they cost some money. They do cost some money. Uh, but a lot of times your insurance will uh, pay for that. Some people n need to do that. Some use sprays, the nicotine sprays that they put uh, in their mouth and nostrils uh, as a way of doing it uh, for other uh, pe people. Uh, to develop habits of positive thinking, uh, deep breathing, meditation, taking up some uh, sport activity, music activity, develop a, a, a new uh, good uh, habit um, can be uh, sufficient. But for, for some people, they need counseling. They need to go see a counselor uh, or uh, meet in groups. So there can be many different ways, uh, but uh, when you're using a substitute at re reduced rate, you're still on the substance. That's a problem. And, and, and the Alan Carr would say that will never work. Well, it does work in some people, but I saw it a lot in drug addicts in my practice who want pain medication for one reason or another that I could reduce it, you know, have it, wait a few months, have it again and again. But, but for them to give up that final, that final amount of a narcotic that fired off their dopamine, man, that's a toughie. That was a toughie uh, that, that I really, uh, so you have to evaluate what works for you and, and some need Counseling, you know, they, they, they need to be uh, counseled, need to uh, speak to them and maybe do some reading uh, about it a little bit. But, but what would cause you to quit? You know, what they have found uh, in research uh, that once you visualize or see pictures, that's more likely to motivate you uh, to quit. So they showed some pictures, uh, and they put them actually on cigarette packs years ago, some are still now, uh, and they found that more brutal they were, so you could see it, teeth missing, cancers, amputations, whatever. The government ma has mandated that in different countries, mm. that you're more likely to quit. So I'm thinking myself, because I'm trying to help people, uh, uh, that uh, I'm going to make a sheet of paper which shows people with different serious complications of, say, their diabetes, because I, I deal with people with diabetes, uh, addictions, sugar addiction, for example, nicotine addiction, um, that a uh, if you want to learn something like uh, great golfers, they visualize their shot before they hit the ball. So you're trying to change. So to look at some pictures and 
complications uh, might help you quit. Uh, and, and, and that could be a reason that in this book, The Golden Holocaust, he's got this uh, picture, brutal picture, you know, uh, on the front uh, that, you know, pretty brutal. And uh, you might visualize this right now if you have a smoking problem and that you don't want that to happen to you. You're going to die younger and odds are some serious medical complication from, can you imagine having your jaw removed, your tongue removed? Mm -hmm. They remove part of the esophagus. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've seen it, can't swallow, can hardly breathe, partially amputated. And, uh, and, and you want to avoid that, uh, obviously. And that might be, you know, motivation uh, enough. You can incidentally look on uh, YouTube. You can go to uh, YouTube, Rudy Cashman, Addiction and c Cigarettes. And some of my old YouTube shows uh, will come up and, and listen to some other lectures that I've given before on this because information is helpful. I don't uh, know everything. I look at YouTube all the time to learn things, how to play pickleball better, <laughs> play t tennis better, or t take a music lesson or a singing lesson of YouTube. So it's a, it's a very good thing. Uh, also, you can look at... Uh, Live to be a hundred, Rudy Cashman, uh, and uh, a lot of posts that I do uh, from diabetes to gluten to uh, cigarette addiction. They'll be on there, like ten minute little things you can listen to. In my YouTube shows, actually, there must be five hundred on there about different health things. Uh, but why am I doing this? I love you. I care about you. Uh, and the government is not going to motivate you to quit. They, they may act like it, but in the end, they've allowed this e-cigarette business in our state. Uh, uh, and I know of senators in the state that I went and talked to, for example, you know, who themselves uh, uh, think they're doing a wonderful job, but they did not stand up and pass a state law uh, that, that is increases the cigarette tax. If you increase the cigarette ta tax 10% by a law called the elasticity of demand, uh, actually, if you increase the cigarette tax 10%, 0.4% of the people will stop using cigarettes. Mm -hmm. Called elasticity of demand. Yeah, interesting. So they didn't increase the cigarette tax. Okay. Also, the age that kids can buy cigarettes, 21 to 18, they didn't do that either. Okay. Uh, and so a lot of things they could have done and say to outlaw e-cigarettes, uh, those three things they could have done. Indiana State House and Senate did not pass those laws. Mm -hmm. Next time you see your congressman, I talk to him about that. And, and I personally know the head of the Senate, and I uh, mentioned this uh, to him, uh, and because this is, affects all of us in your family. So I think uh, in summary, thanks for listening. I did this because I care about you. If you want to be coached about getting over this addiction or getting rid of diabetes and its 30 diseases associated, which is related to sugar addiction, okay? So I give nicotine addiction, sugar addiction. I counsel people for free at the Three Rivers Pharmacy by Concordia. The phone number is 373. 1083, 370, 1083. I go there every Friday. I'm going there this Friday. Now we'll continue to push this on 
uh, addiction, all addictions, but today was specifically cigarette addiction. We're especially harming our children. You could read about it too. I wrote a book called Harming and Killing Our, our, uh, uh, our Children. Uh, it's a, a book here that uh, uh, you can get, a, get on Amazon if you wanted to, to uh, look at that. It goes to all the things that you could do to have a healthy uh, a, a child. Uh, and I uh, appreciate speaking to you. And I hope uh, we uh, uh, meet again. And like I said, you can go to YouTube and look at a lot of other health shows. I do this because I care about you. I'm a doctor and, and I love you. Namaste. Thank you very much. Production facilities provided by Access Fort Wayne. Learn more under the Explore tab at acpl.info.